All right, starting off the top 10. Now remember, obviously there are movies that are better than this. <laughs> this, the my top 10, they're just the ones that I find personally the most interesting. It's just suited uh, to, to my tastes is all. So anyway, here we go. Number 10 is Don't Worry Darling. <laughs> now, other people might not like this, but I like this sort of movie. I like, you know, the stylized stuff, the weird, creepy, you know, sequences, the, you know, something's not right with this world. What could it be? Trying to figure out what it is. I would like to see uh, some sort of sequel where it explores what's going on here. <laughs> you know, the world that this is set up in and that sort of thing. So I liked it. I know that other people didn't, but I liked it. Number nine is a Christmas movie, and it stars Hopper from Stranger Things as Santa Claus. What? What kind of craziness is this? So, yeah, you know it. You love it. It's called Violent Night, <laughs> and it was a very violent night. <laughs> so, yeah, so I thought this movie was great. Now, I, I think that uh, that movie Fat Man from a from a couple years ago was probably a better movie, but this was a whole lot of fun. They're very different movies, but this movie had some crazy kills and just some just insane <laughs> over-the-top nonsense, really. So there is this whole, people say that the movie is Die Hard with Home Alone sort of thing. There is there is a Home Alone scene, but they play it up a lot more real you know like in home alone it it isn't as brutal those things but in this the home alone traps are very brutal <laughs> so that was fun to see but yeah so you know a christmas movie made it on the list i think this movie is great i i kind of hope they make more of these because this was hilarious <laughs> number eight it's probably the most uh, serious movie on my list. It's the one that's, you know, probably the only one that might get an Oscar. <laughs> it's an actual movie. It's by the Spielberg. And uh, the movie, it is semi-biographical. And uh, you know what I'm talking about by now. It's the Fablemans, of course. So it's, uh, obviously it's not, the kid's name isn't Steven Spielberg, but the whole thing is like sort of loosely, if not, you know, more than loosely based on his life, that sort of thing. But, and the performances are great and it looks, it looks amazing and everything is wonderful about it. And, uh, and the surprising thing is Seth Rogen gives, uh, an amazing performance, just a completely straight performance. Like, he isn't being a funny ha ha man. He is just dude in movie. <laughs> and he does a great job. So this movie is pretty good. You know, it's got some good visuals. And it's a, it's a pretty interesting story and all that sort of thing. But Fablemans. Everyone watched it. <laughs> Number seven. It's a movie absolutely nobody watched. <laughs> but I saw it, and I thought it was amazing. And it's a shame that no one will ever see this. <laughs> this movie was called The Outfit. And it is a, a very simple movie. It's basically everything happens in this one little shop. Like it's a tailor shop sort of thing where there, there's a guy in there that makes suits. And... You know, he, uh, he, he's working in a, a mob town, you know, so he's got to pay for protection or, you know, he's letting them use his, his, uh, facilities in the back to, you know, hide packages or, you know, just different things like this. And, but he gets drawn in to a happenstance because one of the mob guys gets shot and they go there to hide out sort of thing. So... The, the whole movie is basically in this one little little store over the course of a, 
of a of like a single night. I mean, they flash back to stuff that happens earlier, but yeah. But this movie is amazing. It really is. The acting is amazing, and the wondering what's going to happen next is is pretty amazing also. But it's a shame no one knows about this movie because it's really great. And the sixth movie on this list, our number six, <laughs> is uh, the the third film by the Jordan Peele entitled Nope. Yeah, so it's Jordan Peele's alien movie, and it's an inter it's a interesting take on it that I you know I never thought of anything like this before. And uh, some of the visuals, you know, near the end are really amazing. It's not as good as Get Out. But, you know, I th I personally think I like this one a little bit more than Us. Uh, his other his other movie. But, <laughs> so I saw a lot of reviews about this. And a lot of people were, like, complaining about the whole thing about the thing about the monkey. How it's kind of out of nowhere. And it's like, no, it's like, you know, Jordan Peele, he's putting in his his themes and his message into all those movies he makes. And this one, you know, it's like you think you're in control of something and you're not in control of it at all. <laughs> so, you know, and I think, I think he's like, it's, it's a, his views on show business too. Like, I think that show business is the monster. <laughs> you know, and he's working with it, but, you know, trying not to look it in the eye. <laughs> so, anyway, nope, that was pretty great. Number five, we're in the top five of my favorite movies of 2022. Yeah, and this one, number five is the movie called Amsterdam. Yeah. Now, I really enjoyed this. I saw some other people say they didn't like it as much. But I thought this this movie was great. It's right up my alley. It's got a bunch of crazy dialogue and a bunch of crazy <laughs> circumstances and happenings and goings on. And the cast is insane. Absolutely everybody's in this movie. <laughs> and they all do an amazing job. And it's kind of interesting because... Basically, at the end, they do, like, a little, you know, this sort of thing actually happened. Now, this is obviously highly dramatized, and it's not based on any actual thing, like, true event. But things like this were going on in the lead-up to World War II. That's when the movie is set. So, that's kind of interesting, but... Yeah, this movie's right up my alley. <laughs> With the weird dialogue and, you know, the craziness. Stuff like that. So, Amsterdam. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I don't care what you say. Four. This movie's number four. Yeah, so, <laughs> this movie is just, just a good time. It's dumb. It's a dumb premise. It's, but it's, it's hilariously executed. And the name of the movie is, I gotta read it. The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, starring Nick Cage. As Nick Cage. <laughs> and Nick Cage. <laughs> yeah, he plays two versions of himself in this movie. <laughs> but uh, this movie is great. I mean, I just think it's hilarious. And it's like, yeah, the plot is, you know, just basic, basic, you know, sort of, sort of spy, you know, movie. But the fact that the whole thing is like, this is Nick Cage playing himself, or, you know, sort of like a version of himself that the public sees him as, this person that does a whole bunch of weird movies. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, yeah, and it, you know, there's lots of Easter eggs and name dropping his other movies that he's been in and stuff like that, so. I mean, if you're a fan of Nick Cage, obviously, 
you gotta watch this. But even if you're not a fan of Nick Cage, this movie is just fun. It's a fun and funny good time. So, yeah. Number three. So, here's another movie where I'm pretty sure absolutely no one watched <laughs> watched this movie. And they probably never will. And it's a shame. Because I think this movie's great. <laughs> I really enjoyed this movie a lot. And it's I was surprised I enjoyed it as much as I did. So the movie, it is called Bones and All. And it is a movie about two young lovers trying to make their way in this crazy world. And it just so happens that they're some sort of cannibal. What? So it's like, they're not like zombies where they're dead and they just eat people. But, uh... It's like they're they're vampires. They have a hunger, you know, you know that that's usually in all the vampire movies. But you know, they just they gotta eat people. They can't help it. <laughs> but it's interesting because the movie isn't really about that. The movie is about people who are like ostracized, trying to just survive in the world. You know, they got some, they got a problem that they, they can't get rid of and they can't just be normal like everybody else. So, and they just got to try to make it in this world, you know? So I thought it was, it was, it's, the movie's more interesting than the premise would ever have you believe. And the acting was amazing. So, yeah. So, it's a shame absolutely nobody saw this movie, but Bones and All was great. It definitely belongs in my top three of the year. What could possibly be my number two movie? <laughs> so, I'll tell you. It's Bullet Train, obviously. This movie is made specifically for me, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Now, obviously, it's got it's got a Guy Ritchie vibe, got a Quentin Tarantino sort of vibe. It's highly stylized craziness, just madness and mayhem from start to finish. The entire movie is absurd and nonsense, <laughs> but it's also very cool. It's kind of comic booky. I think it's actually based on a comic book. Now that I'm remembering, I saw the movie a while back, but this movie. Is definitely now this movie is not just one of my favorite movies of the year. This is a movie that I think should, would definitely be, you know, one of my favorite movies ever, which might surprise some people because there's so many movies that people will say are better. It's like, yeah, but this movie was just made for me. You don't, you don't understand. So <laughs> I love this movie. I love the two. The brothers that are constantly talking about Thomas the Tank Engine characters. I love all the... I love Brad Pitt acting like a buffoon. <laughs> and I, I love the crazy fighting and tight spaces. I love the, the highly stylized nonsense of the whole thing. But, yeah. So, Bullet Train. It's my number two movie. And I know you don't agree with that, but I do not care what you think. Make your own list. <laughs> and my number one movie, you guessed it. It's everything, everywhere, all at once, all the time, throughout all time, in every situation, every day. <laughs> so... This is another movie that is made specifically just for me. <laughs> because it's nonsense and mayhem and madness. Uh, it's It's got a crazy sci-fi aspect to it, you know. And it's just, this movie made me laugh a lot. And some of the fights were really funny too. And it has great performances. I mean, the the main character lady... She's a famous stunt woman. She's been in lots of movies. And uh, the little boy was that kid from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. What? 
It's like he's been gone forever, and he was in the Goonies. Yeah, it was like, well, where's this guy been forever, you know? <laughs> Just kind of surprised, and he showed up. So, there is that. And, uh, obviously, Jamie Lee Curtis, she plays a really weird character, and half, and sometimes in the movie she's got hot dog fingers. What? Why is this happening? This movie's ridiculous. <laughs> Just the way I like it. <laughs> There's there's things in this movie that are just so absurd. There's there's a scene, literally, it's got to be like, like maybe five, seven, eight minutes long, of just, just rocks. But there's like text on the screen of what the rocks are thinking because in this particular universe, you know, it's about a multiverse sort of thing. In this particular universe, everybody's a rock. It's just. It's absurd. They're rocks with googly eyes. There's so many googly eyes in this movie. <laughs> so, this is another one of those movies. I think it's probably just going to be on my list of all-time favorite movies. Because it's so it's so absurd and weird. That's right. Up my alley. It's made just for me, I'm pretty sure. So, anyway, that's my number one. That's the last movie on my top 20 favoritest movies of... 2022 and I understand there's some movies you probably think should have been on here but I don't care about those movies <laughs> make your own lists but, anyway, but these are my top 20 favoritest movies of 2022 yeah well all right that was part two of my top 20 most favoritest movies of 2022. Uh, I hope you liked it. And if you didn't, that's okay. You know, I was just throwing my opinions and thoughts up on top of the thoughts and opinions pile. They'll soon be buried by everybody else's. But, uh, you know, that's uh, that that's all this video was. It's all all my videos are. So, uh, yeah. So, just go ahead and like, subscribe, you know. Change your socks, wash your windows, ring the bell, feed your cat, all that sort of thing.